Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for January 6th, 2022. Well, my goodness, guys, you can probably hear in my voice I'm suffering from a little bit of a cold. Um, don't feel all that bad, but my voice is not too sharp today, so I do apologize. How about we jump into today? We had some ugly selling yesterday, and that might mean a little bit of technical damage um, experienced in the charts. So let's settle in. Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for putting up with this crazy voice this morning. Let's take a look at these charts. We had some sellers come in yesterday. We were reminded that, doggone it, the bears are still out there. The media would kind of like to tell us that the bears have no potential of doing anything, but boy, they sure showed up yesterday and they had a little bit of fight in them. However, we had some technical damage, but not all is lost here in the market at all. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at the Dow, if you notice right in here, we lost a little price support right here of that high, but we didn't fall enough to really even break this price support in the chart. So no real damage there. I mean, obviously that is a pretty bearish candle and a reversal candle that only is going to matter um, significantly if we actually were to get a follow through today. If we hold in this area in here, if we find enough bullishness to hold in this area here, this is really nothing more than a substantial pullback into a consolidating zone. And we may find um, those bulls have enough energy to hold us right in this area right here. However, if they were to slip, that's where the technical damage starts to really happen in the Dow. And we might look for some supports down in this area in that chart. Let's keep in mind that we are well above our 50-day moving average. So, so far, no problems with that. We'd have to fall pretty substantially down into here maybe to test that 50-day. So let's watch that closely but for now the diamonds held up pretty darn well and one of the reasons that is the case is there has been a massive rotation into defensive sector stocks and dividend paying plays so the diamonds has been uh, the benefit benefactor of that rotation let's take a look at the spy now the SPY took a pretty hard hit, but it all isn't lost here as well. Certainly we did break down through this little level of price support in the chart, but not so much that we can't bounce back up off of there. Now clearly we've created some price resistance in the chart and that big, big old candle right there shows a little bit of panic. And one of the reasons that's the case is tech, the tech sector is really suffering here due to those rising bonds. And, um, well, we'll just have to wait and see how this plays out. Um, if we were to bounce up off of here and bounce right back above this area of support, probably no harm, no foul. We could bounce around in here and then still make that attempt for another shot at these highs here. However, if we were to fail that price support area and follow through today, that could be a problem. And there may be a reason why we could see a little bit of a follow through of that today. Let's take a look. If we take a look at our 50-day moving average, it really wouldn't be all that much of a stretch to see that possibility that we could come at least into that 50-day moving average and then possibly get a bounce. So watch for that possibility because we do have bond yields going up again this morning. So keep a close eye on that. That test of that 50-day moving average seems rather likely. And then if we do find that bullish support, then we'll want to watch these resistance levels as we try to bounce back up. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ took it on the chin pretty hard yesterday. Um, we now officially have this uh, downtrend in play with the lower highs showing up here in the market um, on the NASDAQ, and largely because of this um, really sharp rise in bonds. Uh, tech stocks um, usually respond negatively to rising yields. And well, that certainly happened yesterday as we learned that the Fed is going to become more aggressive and really 
um, start attacking um, inflation. So not only did we lose this area of price support here in the chart and create a little technical damage um, in that topping pattern, but we sliced right through that little level right there that I talked about yesterday. And we are quickly approaching this area in the chart. And probably the bigger of the technical damage hits here yesterday was here in the NASDAQ because we slid below that 50-day moving average. Now we have some price support right through here as you can see so if we get a little bit more selling and right now we're showing just a little bit more of that possible follow-through here uh, to the downside on that um, on that chart as you can see this morning in the pre-market so watch that here carefully if we push down in here we may find some price support the problem is as we start to bounce back we're going to then run into some significant levels of price resistance and this pattern up here that's a pretty ugly pattern to try and push back up through. So as we rally back, we'll want to be watching that 50-day moving average closely for that potential that we could fail at the 50-day. I'm not saying that that will occur. I'm just saying we'll have to watch that close. And then let's take a look at our IWM. Now the Russell also took a pretty big hit technically yesterday, but we still have some price support in this chart. Notice that we um, now officially did fail at our 50 day moving average, pushing and slicing right back below that 200 day. But if we take a look at this chart, you can see there is significant price support under this level. So all is not lost yet, but I do think IWM is a pretty weak looking chart and there is some problems really developing here with um, this. So let's watch that closely. Unfortunately, the way the market has been acting, everything is just a highly speculating, highly emotional market where we just either were rushing and chasing in, creating these great big giant moves. We're not settling down at all. It's just this hyper emotional market that we're in. And that can be really punishing and we can see that in in this NASDAQ or in the IWM chart in that possibility that we could swing between these two levels which are dramatic swings in um, that index and create a lot of pain in people's um, accounts as long as we continue these emotionally based moves in the market. Let's take a look at our um, VIX. Now our VIX yesterday was holding in there for quite a while and then we um, really hit the, that heavy selling toward the end of the day and it spiked up here a little bit. We didn't quite make it back above that 20 handle in the chart. So what that means is we have some price resistance right here, um, right about where we closed the day yesterday. So we've got quite a little bit of price resistance in that chart. And that means if we can find that bullishness or reason to recover or shake off the Fed, and we've certainly had that capacity to do that. It doesn't matter how bad a data point is we just choose to ignore it after a little bit of price reaction choose to ignore it and we just keep buying um, can they continue to do that with the Fed well, maybe so I don't know why we couldn't um, there's been an amazing capacity to do that recently so watch this right in here if we uh, were to pull back and fail uh, below that um, 20 handle, then uh, that's a bullish sign for the market. And we continue this uh, rather sharp downtrend here in, um, in our VIX. So watch that closely. That is that possibility. However, if we were to spike above this area and get up here and hold, that's where we could run into a little bit of problem, breaking that downtrend, holding that um, 20 handle in there. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely. Let's take a look at um, our T2122. Now I've been mentioning here in T2122 and this is just one of those things that um, guys I want to keep pointing out. I know no one likes to hear it when I talk about the internals of the market showing us problems but this is just proof positive that this stuff actually does matter. And if we could, we can choose to ignore it if we want to, but usually at our own peril when we choose to ignore it. Now this highly emotional market has made it so that even this has been very, very challenging 
to um, read because we choose to ignore so much and then we just get these wild price swings in the market. Hopefully that will begin to calm down here eventually, but we'll want to watch this pretty closely. So our T2122, obviously we were in a very overbought condition here based on that. And we had some um, obviously hard selling yesterday. Um, but we have not reached an oversold condition yet in the market, which means we still have that opportunity if we find some bearish reason today to continue to move lower, and maybe rising bonds could do that, to continue moving lower. We still have a ways to go before we reach that oversold condition. What I don't like is that we're doing it, it's, it's an all or nothing market. Either we're rushing in and trying to ignore everything and just piling into stocks, um, in wild speculation or we're running for the door in fear and panic. We're, at some point in time, we're going to have to calm this down. But now, if we take a look at this, we still have that opportunity that we could move down in here. If those bulls find a reason, we have certainly opened up plenty of opportunity to recover if those bulls find that opportunity to do that. And I can't rule that out the way we've just been wildly speculating here in the market. If we take a look at our T2108, now you guys know that I've been talking about this T2108 and I've been worried about this internal in the market. But I gotta tell you, yesterday, even as we sold off, it didn't sell off all that badly. And so we did pull back in that T2108 and we are still downtrending here in the, in the market. But um, we didn't really create a tremendous amount of damage in that T2108, at least yesterday. So we're holding up here near that downtrend um, in the chart. I still am concerned that we are so close to these highs in the market and we really don't have that many stocks um, helping to support. And as I've said before, with the big tech um, having been such a strong leader in the market, what happens if big tech starts to sell? Well, we saw that yesterday when big tech really started to sell off um, due to those bond prices. So it may be difficult, it may be really difficult, even if we have a pretty substantial move in some of these um, underlying stocks, to get the market moving up if big tech continues to sell. So watch that closely. And then if we take a look at our T2107, we also had some selling in T2107, and this is a failure along the downtrend. And I've mentioned this before, we need to get this back up and hold. We need to start breaking some of those levels. If we continue to fail at these downtrends, then we have some more problems um, here in the market. But once again, we ended the day with 42% of the stocks above their um, um, 208 moving average and honestly with the strength of the selling yesterday I would have, would have expected a little bit more selling in there so I'm going to give this up both T2108 and T2107 give that up to the bulls they held on better than I would have expected when I looked at these charts and that possibility that we could uh, bounce back up in here that doesn't necessarily mean we see the indexes really take off and rise dramatically um, but it way, what it may mean is we hold and maybe we find a way to consolidate here in the market and spill off some of this volatility. Let's take a look at our uh, T2101. And here was another indicator of that. Normally when we see a big selling wave in the market, we see market breadth actually improve or go up and not necessarily improve, but spike. And we didn't see that yesterday. So as we saw that selling, we continued to push this back down and test this level of price support and this downtrend in the chart. So we didn't get that panic, just run for the door kind of thing, um, everything selling off all at the same time. As a matter of fact, what we continued to see, um, even as we were selling, a rotation into defensive sector type stocks. So keep a close eye on that. So with that, how about we take a look at our earnings calendar. In our earnings calendar, we do have a little bit, um, or economic calendar, we do have a little bit to think about today in that economic calendar. Let's take a look at this. We've got international trading uh, goods. 
Um, we've had a pretty good capacity of just ignoring these numbers. Um, our trade deficit, our trading goods numbers are horrible. And we've had a, an amazing capacity to just say, well, we don't care. Um, but watch that carefully um, on that number today. Jobless claims. Jobless claims are, are the Econo Day consensus is suggesting that we see a little bit of an increase in those jobless claims this week. We'll see if that comes, comes to bear. One of the things that was interesting in the Fed statement yesterday is um, the conversation that they believe we have finally reached or very near a full employment um, um, in the market. So that that also increases their aggressiveness here a little bit. And we might actually start to see um, um, jobless claims uh, tick up a little bit if employers start pulling back on their hiring. So watch that closely. And then we've got factory orders, ISM services, we've got natural gas report, and of course that Fed balance sheet, which nobody cares about. Um, let's take a look. Um, oh, and just keep in mind, as you're preparing um, for um, Friday, as you're thinking ahead, remember we've got that big employment situation number coming out before the bell on Friday morning, so pay attention to that. Let's take a look at that earnings calendar. We have our biggest day of earnings today um, on the calendar with a, with a number of uh, notable reports today to pay attention to. So let's take a look and see what we've got going on here. By the way, if you want to catch the full list of notables, and this is going to be important as we slide into earnings season, make sure that you click that link below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog where you can get my full list of notables for the day. So first off, let's take a look. We've got BBBY in here reporting and boy yesterday BBBY took a pretty substantial hit and um, with um, its reporting this morning it looks like we're moving even lower notice right in here this is a substantial break of price support uh, Bed Bath & Beyond not looking too good here in this chart so keep a close eye on that as that continues to sell off um, we're also going to hear from ConAgra now ConAgra um, has enjoyed a really nice rally. And again, this is that consumer defensive sector, um, that food sector, uh, moving up pretty strongly. So let's keep an eye on that. Looks like they're gapping a little bit lower here this morning, perhaps on that earnings report. Let's watch that carefully. If we were to break out above um, some of this consolidating area in here, that could be an important move here for ConAgra. So keep a close eye on that stock. We're also going to hear from um, Helen of Troy today. Helen of Troy, we'll want to watch that. We're going to hear um, from Care US. We'll want to keep an eye on that. That's been moving in this little uptrend, but pulling back from this recent high. So watch that carefully. And the last one I'm going to cover this morning is, um, and if again, go back to the blog post if you want to catch um, all the notables is uh, uh, PetSmart um, or PriceMart will be reporting today and this thing has been in an ugly downtrend so this could be a critical report here today uh, whether or not it can push through that downtrend and start to hold if we fa continue to fail here that doesn't look very promising for that chart so with that everyone let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that guys if you could do me a quick favor if you find these videos to be useful and helpful to you if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post one of these videos and if you find these videos to help you with your preparation for the day please do me that favor and click that thumbs up button leave a brief comment um, I truly truly appreciate that and hopefully guys you can see that this is a little bit different and uh, there's no hype there's no prediction here we're looking at those internals and with that kind of look it can actually save you an awful lot of money in your account. As a matter of fact, um, the members of Rightway Options clocked some really big profits yesterday um, because we were prepared for this potential move. So if you find these things to be helpful, please continue to share these videos out on your social media feed and um, encourage other folks to, to join us here because the more eyes on the market, 
the better we all do working as a team. Let's take a look at um, some of these stocks that could be setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. And as a matter of fact, make sure you do your own due diligence in these charts. One of the things I want to point out here is the financial sector. Now, the financial sector had a huge rally to the upside, and I have absolutely no interest whatsoever in chasing a big spiking move like that. But if we can get a pullback, a consolidation, a rest in here, and the financials prove to hold above this downtrend, then I would have an interest in that. So I think we probably should put some of those financials on our list, start watching this. Interestingly enough, we're trying to spike up here this morning. And this may be a function of the fact that bond rates are screaming to the upside, um, suggesting that banks can start charging higher rates. So you might want to keep an eye on that. But I think we need a rest, a consolidation, some kind of proof of some settling in this chart before we jump into some of those trades. I'm also going to point out energy. Now, energy has a little bit of an extra problem in here. We did see our petroleum status. Um, we had a little bit of decline in petroleum status, even though our distillates were up um, yesterday. <clears throat> And we know that um, we have heard from OPEC that they're going to try, well, they're going to start pumping uh, more oil. And that could affect this um, in a longer term. But notice here, we've broken this downtrend and this big spiking move. I don't know why we're, the, the market is just absolutely insane in the way we chase risk. And that's what's creating so much danger here in the market. And you can see we're trying to spike this back up. So keep an eye on some of those energy sector stocks. There are stocks out there like um, CVX. That's a nice looking chart moving on up after breaking through resistance. So if you can catch any kind of a little rest or consolidation in here, I would watch that for a potential upside move. And we're seeing quite a bit of those um, come on strong. Um, I think you also want to be keeping an eye on some telecom. Take a look at AT&T. Oh my goodness, you guys know that I've been talking about this as a potential uh, for an upside move and wow, did it take off and go. Now don't chase this stock. We need a little rest, a consolidation, a pullback of some kind in that stock to set up the next opportunity in that trade. But watch that closely. Again, some of these big dividend payers, some of these defensive sector stocks have been holding a lot of strength. Take a look at KHC. I've been mentioning this. And KHC caught just a little bit of selling yesterday, but this has been in this beautiful upside um, move in the chart. And I apologize, my tools decided to change on their own there. And as you can see, moving up in this chart, and we're holding on to some price support. So if this consolidates and rests back into that trend, Look for that next opportunity and that possibility that could pop out. And boy, you just go down a list of defensive consumer staples type stocks and we're, we see lots and lots of strength. Take a look at Coke, a little rest or pullback in there would set up an opportunity. Uh, PepsiCo, very, very strong, moving up in a trend, continue to slide up through here. Watch that for that next opportunity into that trade. Some very, very good looking charts. And also continue to keep an eye on things like healthcare, Merck had a nice pop yesterday. As you guys know, I've been talking about that one. Popping through, any kind of little rest or pullback in here toward that trend would set up that next opportunity um, in that chart. Um, so some of those healthcare stocks are holding up very well. As you guys know, I've been talking about Philip Morris for quite some time here. <laughs> That was my alert that's moved up nicely. And notice we're getting this little resting pullback toward the trend. It's exactly what I wanna see. So any rest or pullback in there, holding support, holding into the trend, I would look for that next opportunity to the upside. So there's a few charts for you to consider, for you to look at. Be really careful out there today, guys. There's probably gonna be quite a little bit of volatility. Um, speculation still remains very high, which means emotions are very high in this market that can add some danger. So everyone, I wanna wish you all the very best. Have an awesome day. And we'll see you right back here, bright and early, Friday morning. 
Take care, everyone.